welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is going to be excavator tips and tricks. This is just some of the stuff that I've learned, uh, things that I've found helpful, and hopefully it'll help you guys out too. So the first thing I wanna cover is uh, the biggest thing that will help you become a better operator is getting used to using your travel pedals as opposed to using your hands. Uh, a lot of functions you're gonna do, and we're gonna see it as I climb up on this pile, a lot of your functions, you're gonna need your hands working while you're tracking. And the sooner you can get comfortable with delicate maneuvering with your feet instead of your hands, the better off you're gonna be. So for instance, we're gonna go climb up on this pile. So I'm gonna take my bucket because it's a fairly steep angle and I'm gonna throw it way out there. Well, I say that. My lunch just kind of came crashing down on me here. All right, take two. Take two, guys. All right, so we're gonna throw our bucket out here. And you wanna get it pretty dang far out there because we're going to track up to the bucket. And so as we track forward, I'm gonna I'm gonna boom down and then I'm gonna stick in. And that's gonna help pull myself up onto this pile. Especially on these bigger machines, the final drives aren't quite as powerful, they aren't quite as quick. And now once we get to this point where we're gonna be able to tip, all I'm gonna do is boom up. And that's gonna let my machine come down nice and easy. And then I'm just gonna track forward onto the pile. So that's one of the, the most popular uses for tracking while you're using your boom and stick motions. But that's critical, that's being able to do that and be confident in those movements is really critical to being efficient in the machine. So that's the first thing I wanna tell you. The other reason you wanna be able to do that is it comes in real good handy when you're tracking up onto a trailer. So let's go back to our edge here. And I'm gonna show you guys what happens if we don't cushion ourselves. I am gonna cushion it a little bit because I don't wanna bang the snot out of myself. But if we just go over this edge, you're gonna see we're just gonna tip. So had I just let myself drop, we would have bam, slammed down. So when you're going up on a trailer or something, so let's spin around and pretend we're going up on a trailer. When we get to this point right here, where you're just about at the tipping point, you can see we're, we're kind of rocking a little bit. Instead of letting the machine go slam down on our trailer, what you can do is you can actually boom out, and, or boom down and stick out, and you can use your machine to help get you comfortably up on that trailer. And then once you get here, bring it back in. And so now instead of slamming down on the trailer, tearing up the equipment, tearing up the trailer, you're able to use your boom, your stick, and your bucket as kind of a, a, a front counterweight to get that weight to teeter you over. So you're gonna use that all the time. One of the reasons I like excavators so much is because it is kind of like a big physics problem. You know, that's, that's just the kind of nerd that I am. That's the way I think about this stuff. But you're essentially in a big teeter-totter. You have a giant heavy counterweight on the back of this machine that's offsetting the load in our bucket. And depending on how close or far away from us that bucket is, is gonna determine whether the seesaw wants to tip forward or tip backwards. And so I'll show you, when we load this bucket up and get a good heaped load, this machine will absolutely tip over. We're gonna keep our load nice and low to the ground. And you can see we are, our track is off of the ground. We are actively tipping. Now, we can boom down. That would be one way to get rid of the tip. But another way, if you think about our physics equation here, if we get that load closer to us by sticking in, now our counterweight offsets it. Now we got a little more play here. If I really boom down hard, it's gonna, it's gonna teeter-totter a little bit. But now we can handle it. Thinking about that whole principle of balance, we can actually take this heat bucket and throw it all the way out there as long as we're booming down and keeping some of the weight off of the machine. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. 
So we've got our load up here, and I'm going to start sticking out, but I'm going to boom down at the same time. So we tip a little bit. Look at how gently I can set us back down. We didn't slam back down on the ground. And it's because I was booming down and I was keeping some of that weight off of the machine because it's free falling. We can actually carry more material out to a distance than the machine would be able to do while it's sitting still. If that makes sense. I know that was quite a that was quite a sentence. But here's another huge heaping bucket. If we boom out, boom down and stick out, we can throw it all the way out there without slamming ourselves into the ground. So playing with weight is a really big thing in excavators and just of equipment and having it start to tip on you is scary and that's okay um, there's nothing wrong with being scared of that feeling and you shouldn't be ashamed of being scared of that at first that's just something that through time you're gonna get more and more comfortable with that these machines do wobble they do tip and and as long as you're in control that's okay so that's the number one thing it's not even number one at this point is it that's one of the things I wanted to tell you guys is you do want to get used to playing with weight because you're going to use that all the time in an excavator. You are constantly playing this giant balancing act between your counterweight and your load out at the end of the stick. Another thing I wanted to tell you guys is, and I've talked about this in one of my vlog episodes, is especially when you start getting into these bigger machines that move slower, uh, wasted movements Will, will add a significant amount of time onto your day. In other words, excavators are all about being productive. productive uh, production is really measured more on excavators on a job site than any other machine because you are one of the, one of the spear points on the job site. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're doing a big cut for a grading job, everything behind you is waiting for you to make that cut. If you're putting pipe in the ground, everyone behind you is waiting for that pipe to go in so that they can smooth it over and start building the road or whatever's coming next. So production is critical. And one of the things that will slow your production down is wasted movements. And a prime example is we're going to reach all the way out here. We're going to come in. We're going to take our scoop.
to get across and get another bucket. So I'm gonna multiply that number, the 405 times that we've cycled, by our three seconds that we're losing each time. So if I take my 405 and multiply by three, and then I'm gonna divide that by 60 because that was seconds and I wanna convert that to minutes. That added 20 minutes onto our day. Or I should say the opposite. We lost 20 minutes in our day. And if you think about how long it takes a 385 to do three passes, I bet it can knock three passes out in two and a half to three minutes. So how many more trucks could you have just loaded with that extra 20 minutes that you wasted? And all it was that was causing you to waste that time is this motion right here. So you can see that time adds up really quick. And that's why it's critical when you wanna be efficient in an excavator to train yourself not to do a bunch of excess motions because it doesn't feel like you're losing much time every cycle. But when you add that up over the course of a day, over 400 or 500 or 800 cycles, all of a sudden that time adds up big time. Another thing I wanna talk about is everyone loves to brag on getting heat scoops. And don't get me wrong, when we're hogging material like this, getting good heat scoops makes you far more productive. But I also want to be clear that there are times on the job site where you want to have just an even bucket. And one of those times is on road jobs when you are loading, um, whether you're loading semis or regular dump trucks, those guys have to go down the road and they have DOT all over them and they don't want a bunch of crap all over their truck. And you can see, if I go in here and I get a huge honker heap scoop like a man, look at that. But also, when I stop, look at how much material's going everywhere. If that went all over the side of your trucker's rig, he would come out of the cab and chew your ass. So there are times when it is appropriate to get regular bucket scoops. But when you are hogging, generally you want to get as much material in that bucket as possible. Now, there is a fine line. Because one of the things that I see a lot of operators do, and this is not just rookies, this is a lot of experienced operators. They keep their bucket in the material too long. So we're making our pull right now, we're getting our bucket loaded. Right here is where we really start to load the bucket. And I'm going to stick in and I'm going to curl a little bit. Right here, if I curl, I'm going to have a nice heap bucket. So that's the way you should do it. Once you get that bucket full, pull it up out of the cut. But what I see a lot of guys do is, they get that bucket right there where it should curl and be loaded, but then they sit there and they just drag it and drag it and drag it and drag it, and you're getting what? Maybe, maybe, let's call it 10% more material, and I think that's being generous. But in the time it took you to drag it through all that material, I could have just taken another pass. And look at that's it's not like that's not a heat bucket. That's a good size bucket. So if I'm able to do three buckets to your every two, going back to our production and being efficient, I'm gonna out dig you all day long, even though you're getting these monster heat buckets. So again, wasted movement, wasted energy, that's all gonna add up over the course of a day. So that's all stuff you wanna be aware of. Another big piece of advice I'm gonna give you so you don't look like a rookie is clear room for your counterweight. One of the biggest things that is a huge indicator to everyone on the job site, whether or not you know what you're doing in an excavator, is if you're a counterweight polisher. So if I were to track all the way forward and get my tracks right up against that pile, as soon as I spin around, my counterweight's gonna wipe out that pile. It's gonna rub the paint off of the counterweight. If that dirt is high enough, it's actually gonna dent some of your side panels, which you may have seen on this excavator. That's already happened. On, and on a ton of job sites, you see excavators with dented panels, and that's why, it's because guys don't clear room for their counterweight. And so all you have to do, let's say we didn't have any room, and we had to get right up on this pile. It's a real easy fix. So right here, if I spin, I'm gonna rub. What I can do is I can take my bucket, and we only have to go to the top of the tracks. The counterweight is above the tracks. So if I position my bucket right here, and I just do a pass, and I actually like to 
angle my bucket down so I get it down even further. Now I can comfortably spin. And when we spin back around, you're going to see there's no rubbing. There's no new rubbing from the counterweight because we cleared that area. Make sure you clear room for your counterweight so you don't damage the machine and you don't look like a rookie. So that's another tip. Another time saving tip that I've got for you is um, when you have really dense compacted material. Don't get me wrong, we all like to feel like big manly men and get huge heaping buckets that makes us feel all good about ourselves. I'm down, I understand that, but it's not always efficient. So I've been tracking on this because this is the pad I've been sitting on. So this is packed pretty good right here. So what I'm gonna do instead of trying to grab from the bottom and get a full bucket from way down here, because I know this is packed, is I'm gonna go about halfway. I'm gonna curl so that my teeth can enter with as little resistance as possible. And I'm gonna take a swipe from right here. Is it as heaped as it could be? No. But again, like I've been saying, if I can take three bites in the time that it would have taken me to do two of the giant heaping mamas that we were wanting to go for originally, this is more efficient. This is more productive. And again, over here, because I've tracked on this, I'm going to get it shallow. I'm going to peel that material up. I'm going to swing and get rid of it. And then I'll come back and get my full heaping bucket pass. So digging to the conditions that you're in is also a critical thing when you're running an excavator. You can't always dig like you're in sand and you can just pull through it all day long. Sometimes you're going to have to take smaller passes. For instance, I can go out here, I can keep my bucket at that pretty steep angle and I can scrape this and then I can slowly bring it in and then I can start to curl. But if we were in really heavy clay, or like we were here where my track has been has been compacting the material and it's a lot harder, there, there are going to be times where it's far more efficient to come into a pile like this. Come in straight with least resistance, let those teeth push in and cut it for you. That's going to be more efficient sometimes. It just depends on the conditions that you're digging in. So one piece of advice I will give to new operators uh, in any piece of equipment, but particularly in dozers and excavators, uh, track machines in general, because you have the ability to tip, and I don't even mean tip over, let me pull my block out up, I'm not even talking tipping all the way over. When you come over the crest of a hill with both, both excavators and dozers, the machine will slam down on the ground and easily catapult you up out of the machine. There is no shame in wearing a seatbelt when you first start operating these machines. I will 100% confess, I did it when I started running the machines, when, when I started in heavy equipment. If I didn't know the machine, I threw on the seatbelt. I highly recommend you do that and you don't need to be ashamed of doing that. You don't need to be embarrassed by it. It is far safer for you to stay in the machine as opposed to being ejected out of the machine. So wear your seatbelt when you're learning these machines and get comfortable with wearing your seatbelt while you learn. Once you get a handle on everything, feel free to take the seatbelt off. I'm not supposed to say that. You should always wear your seatbelt, but let's be realistic about job sites. But that being said, at least while you're learning, there is no shame in wearing a seatbelt. If anyone tries to give you about that, tell them to shut the up and let you learn. You get right back at them. It is better to be safe around heavy equipment than it is to be a manly man. Another piece of advice I give you is use jump turns when possible. If you don't know what a jump turn is, that's the classic how an excavator moves around that you see on the job site. It's where you lift your tracks up off the ground and then you use your swing to help move you left and right. The reason you use jump turns is two reasons. Uh, one, it's a lot easier on your final drives because they're not having to power the machine one way or another in this, especially like right now when I'm on this pile of really soft material, uh, it's a lot harder for them to turn the tracks. So your swing motor will assist your final drives. The second reason is if I were to just start turning right now, I mean, you can see right now, the finals don't even want to move. That's how thick this material is. And part of the reason is, is as I turn, 
I'm pushing material up against this side of my undercarriage and now I'm moving all of that material along with the weight of the machine. Versus if I lift myself up, now I'm not moving any of that material. Now the tracks can freely spin because they're not acting like dozer blades on the ground. So jump turns are really helpful for getting your machine around. So another piece of advice I'll give you again, everything comes back to production when it comes to excavators. Um, especially when you get into bigger machines because they are slower, you want to proactively be doing things hydraulics wise. So a good example is as I'm getting out here, before I'm actually over the area I want to dump the dirt, you'll see I'm already starting to uncurl the bucket, I'm already starting to stick out because I'm anticipating the hydraulics. And that's going to give you faster cycle times. By the time my bucket is dumping, I'm already starting to swing the machine back over to the pot. So right now, I'm going to start uncurling the bucket. Now I'm swinging back to the pile. And because everything's on a little bit of a delay, because this is just a big machine, you're going to move faster. So again, I'm going to bucket out, swing back, Versus, let's watch a cycle when I just do everything in real time. I'm swinging over to where I want to dump. Right there is where I want to dump. Now I'm going to uncurl the bucket. Now I'm going to swing. You can see that's substantially longer. You don't want to think of what you're doing right now. You want to think of what you're about to do. So another tip I'll give you that I see a lot of guys um, not take the time to do, but good operators always take the time to do it, is to level yourself a pad. So it's not as important when you're just hogging material like we are now, but especially anytime you're doing any sort of precision digging, uh, take, take two or three minutes to level yourself a pad. Because otherwise what happens, you can probably see it right now, we're sitting at a pretty good slope this way. And so if I'm trying to, let's just act like we're going to dig out here in the field, you can see there's at least a two or three inch difference from where my tooth is hitting on the right to where it's off the ground on the left. If I try to dig a nice flat hole, it's going to take a, a substantial amount of work for me to do a decent job of getting it close and then I'm going to have my labor doing a crap load of hand work in the hole to get it the rest of the way flat. Versus if I take my two minutes here to level my pad off and then we'll track up on it. extra time it's not a waste of time if it's going to help you dig more efficiently overall so if it's only going to waste a minute or so but it's going to save you or your labor 15 minutes of dinking around to get that hole flat take the time to level yourself off another way you can do that let's say we did need to track this way just a hair and we're going to go downhill you can shore yourself up so we'll take a little material and we're going to throw it right here against our track two inches on these tracks and now I'm nice and level. So that's a real quick way to get yourself up there and you do want to keep it fluffed a little bit. You want to keep that material that we just put down fluffed a little bit knowing that it's going to compact as you dig over it. And so that just saved us a little bit when we just dropped our boom and we put all that weight on this back part of the track section to compact that material. So another thing I wanted to mention in excavators is it's important to know where your power comes from. Uh, you have two, two functions that create the most power for you in an excavator. Uh, the first one is your boom. 
Um, your boom up has a ton of power when it comes to lifting. And then you also have your bucket curl and uncurl is pretty powerful. The weakest function on an excavator is your stick. And of the stick functions, stick out is the weakest by far. And so a lot of times what I'll see guys do is in a craning situation, you may have your load out here and you're trying to lift something heavy and everyone's tendency is to try to stick out because that would lift the load higher. Well, what happens, especially when you get out there ways and you got a heavy load is, that stick cylinder is not powerful enough to push that stick out with a heavy load on it. So there's a couple options of what you can do. The first, if you've got overhead room, the first thing you can do is use your boom cylinders and boom up. You're gonna have far more power with the boom cylinder. The other thing you can do is, if that chain is on the back of the bucket, which 99% of the time, in fact, I would say almost every time I've ever seen anything hooked to it, a bucket with a chain that you're lifting heavy, you should never be lifting with the teeth. If you're lifting any heavy load with the teeth, you need to reconsider what you're doing. That is a terrible idea. So you need to have a proper lifting eye, which normally is either up at the knuckle where the bucket attaches, or it is welded to the back side of the bucket. And so what you can do instead of using your boom cylinders is, you can uncurl your bucket. And that will give you a lot more power than your stick cylinder will give you. Another way this will come in, um, in handy is a lot of times you'll have a truck get stuck on the job site. So you put a chain on your bucket, you chain it to the, to the truck, and then everyone's tendency again is, let's stick in and pull that truck out. Well, a lot of times your stick cylinder doesn't have the balls to do it. What you can do is you can take your bucket and put it on the ground, make sure the chain, so you're gonna pull your stick in until that chain is tight on the truck and your stick won't come in anymore. Then what you're gonna do is put your bucket on the ground and as you stick in, you're gonna uncurl your bucket. And what that's going to do is it's gonna use the power of the bucket cylinder to help drive the stick in and that's gonna give you a lot more draw bar force to get that truck unstuck. So those are a couple helpful things that it took me a couple years of just playing around to kind of figure out. But the big and most important concept for you to know is because it, it's used all the time, is that your stick cylinder is the weakest cylinder. So for instance, when I'm coming into this pile right here, you know, we get to a point right about here where my stick doesn't want to come in anymore. That's where you can really get aggressive with that bucket bucket is what I meant to say if you didn't catch that and you can get a really full bucket so just another helpful tip so one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give to any new operator uh, you know this is an excavator video and, and we're gonna put it in this one but really it goes for any piece of heavy equipment is don't get discouraged uh, this is not an easy thing to do running these machines and learning how they move and how to operate them efficiently I, I totally understand that we just we just put together a 20 minute video packed full of information and that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what I can tell you about running an excavator. Don't get discouraged. As a new operator, please don't, don't look at these videos or get on a job site and have some foreman yelling at you. Please don't get discouraged. This is a really fun industry. This is really fun equipment, but there's a reason they call it a skill trade. Uh, and again, to go back to the phrase I've started using on this channel, Take the time to hone your craft. This is a craft, it takes time, it takes experience, it takes time in the seat. Let, let that drive you, knowing that you're never going to somehow reach this tier of perfection one day. You're always gonna learn, you're always gonna be honing the craft. So let that drive you. Don't get discouraged that you get in this machine and you look like an idiot, even, even if it takes you a week before you start getting smooth and start getting things down. It's okay, we've all been there. We all had to go through that learning phase. It's just part of it. It's part of the industry. This is a skilled trade. So don't get discouraged, just be patient. Just be patient with the machine, be patient with yourself. You will get it, I promise you're gonna get it. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope these have been some helpful tips and tricks for you guys. Uh, this is, honestly, this is a pretty hard subject to cover because there's just so much to excavators. Um, and I'm sure we're gonna do more videos in the future where I have different tips and more things that come to mind. Um, but for 
for this video, that's just, just about going to do it. If you guys have any questions specific to excavators or anything else, uh, absolutely comment down below. I'd love to uh, help you guys out with any of your questions. Hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate the support. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one.